Welcome back. International investors greeted the removal of Ghana's finance minister with caution on Wednesday, bracing for the prospect of more delays to the restructuring of the country's overseas debt ahead of national elections in December this year. President Nana Akufo Addo on Wednesday announced Mohamed Amin Adam, the Minister of State in the Finance Ministry, as Ken Ofori Atta's re replacement. The former finance minister has been leading efforts to get Ghana's finances back on track, including negotiating a domestic debt exchange program, an agreement reached in January with bilateral creditors, including the Paris Club of Lenders and China, to restructure $5.4 billion of external debt. Well, joining me to share the ramifications of the finance minister's removal is Patrick Ba Abakwa, financial analyst and investment advisor. Patrick, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me on your show this uh, morning. Was it a surprise to markets, to you, to the entire country, when uh, the president announced the removal of the finance minister in that uh, cabinet reshuffle? Um, I think, yes, a bit of a shock uh, in the sense that people wanted this particular decision taken somewhere last year when the challenges that we faced as a country was at its highest peak. So when the finance minister passed through that kind of fire, the assumption was that perhaps he is going to be opposed to the current government's eternal ends on January 7, 2025. So for us to see um, him being removed as part of the reshuffle was quite a bit of a surprise. However, in the heat of the moment when we were calling for, people were calling for the removal of the minister last year, what government said was that they wanted the minister to take some kind of key decisions in the IMF uh, discussions before uh, the possible change or removal happening. So looking at where we are now in terms of closing the local debt exchange market and also some uh, significant steps with the foreign bonds uh, decision uh, makers, I think that government wants to take the decision at this point in time to be able to um, add someone else to continue. But if you look at what has happened after the decision to make him step aside or remove him, we are hearing that he's going to be made the special advisor when it comes to decisions on investment at the presidency. So which means that he can still be given some kind of role to lead uh, discussions going forward, but not as the Minister for Finance. And I know that in the last couple of months, uh, the finance minister uh, came under you know, heavy criticism, especially of his handling of the economy. But he has been the face of this very crucial uh, debt negotiations uh, with bilateral creditors in the Paris uh, uh, Club of Lenders and, very importantly, the IMF. Now, while it may have been politically expedient uh, for the president to remove him at this time, he remains the face of the negotiations. Uh, what does that mean for I mean, confidence levels? Uh, because there is still a, a final phase of the deal, which the final, former finance minister was hoping to close by the end of March. Uh, what does this mean? And do you, can you give us a sense of how uh, the creditors, the international community, are uh, processing all of this? I think when you look at the uh, minister that has been nominated for uh, Minister of Finance is someone that was already part of the negotiation um, discussion on the table. So he's not new to the discussions and he's not someone that um, the creditors are not aware of. So in that sense, I think that the discussion will not be too much affected by way of um, progress that has been made so far. As I said earlier on, the discussions we are hearing is that it's going to be made a, the special advisor to the presidency when it comes to investment. That's the former finance minister. This also gives an indication that he's still going to be part of the team that will be negotiating with the external creditors in uh, in this particular regard and going for it. So I'm not sure it's going to really, really affect the status of that negotiation as we speak now, because he himself will be part of the discussion. And also the finance minister that has been nominated was part of the team that started the negotiation from last two years. So it's not going to be a new phase that will be leading the discussion going forward. All right. So now, speaking of negotiations, the final phase of uh, Ghana's debt restructuring includes a, a $13 billion in euro bonds still being owed to creditors. And I know that obviously they're having talks with uh, key uh, creditors such as China. Bring us up to speed in terms of where we are with those negotiations. I know, like I mentioned earlier, uh, the former uh, finance minister was hoping to wrap things up by the end of March. Are things still looking good? I still think that um, these creditors are looking at the, the conditions that have proposed by the, the Minister for Finance 
that's the former minister for finance and also the team that has been negotiating with them, looking at its impact on their finances going forward. So that kind of discussion has been at the deadlock for the past one month or so, even though the projection for the minister for finance uh, was that everything will be ended by March. Where I sit and discussions that have gone, I think that the match may be a bit of an ambitious target. Perhaps it may extend beyond March to somewhere April. But I think that eventually the external creditors will come to the table and agree to some of the conditions and also change some of the conditions from um, the proposal that has been submitted by the Minister for Finance. So, all in all, if March is not a deadline that is being able to be met, we should expect that it should travel to somewhere April. Uh, before the, the discussions be concluded. Because where we are now, most of these creditors are at the point where they appreciate the fact that if they don't sign up to this kind of agreement, their funds are is in danger. So it's a matter of looking at the conditions to see where we can tweak it to sue them and where they can also make some kind of adjustment and also compromise to be able to get the, the agreement signed off finally. Right. Now, th this new finance minister, he's not only going to be overseeing uh, the rest of the debt negotiations is also going to be overseeing the economy. And I was just looking at uh, Ghana's latest inflation numbers that unexpectedly went up uh, in January to 23.5% uh, year on year. Talk to us about, uh, I, I, I guess he hasn't made any official statements yet, but uh, from what is known about him, uh, his experience, etc., uh, what would you say is a level of confidence uh, in terms of how he's going to begin to uh, try to get the economy uh, moving as the IMF uh, plan is also in motion? Uh, I think that uh, it's quite unfortunate that he has limited time to put things in the right perspective by way of uh, trying to push his own agenda as a Minister for Finance. If you look at his uh, background and what he has done in the past as an economist, I, I am in no doubt that he may be able to bring some kind of revival in the economy. Because for the last two years, most of the players in the financial sector and the economy as a whole have lost some kind of confidence in the current finance minister because of some investment decisions that he took in the past. So to bring someone who is coming with his own ideas at this point in time may give some kind of confidence or freshen up some kind of atmosphere in the Ministry of Finance. Coupled with the fact that, as I said, he has a bit of experience in, the, in, the, in managing the economy. So it, it, it's going to be a goodwill for investors by way of engaging someone new. But in terms of time, I'm not too sure he has a lot of time because Ghana will be going to the pool somewhere in November or December this year, which is just about six or seven months away. And I'm not too sure he may have the time to be able to implement a lot of things. Don't forget, he's also a, mean, a member of parliament in Ghana, which means that he also has some kind of uh, alignment or some kind of responsibility towards his constituency that he leads. So uh, it, it's a bit too late for him, but if he's able to put his feet down to be able to drive the key component like inflation, exchange rate, then he may be a minister for a very short period, but may be able to impact so much by way of accomplishments within the period. All right. So speaking about those elections in December, if there's one thing history tells us is that there's always an uptick in spending, political spending, and sometimes even at the fiscal level. Now, I remember this is something that uh, the IMF uh, had uh, had discussions about and at the initial uh, stages of the uh, the three billion dollar deal, but there have been or there were assurances given by the fiscal authorities uh, that. Uh, spending will be kept at very moderate levels but you know how these things go when elections come and the momentum picks up and then you know things get lost in translation etc uh, are you concerned are the markets concerned and uh, is there confidence that the fiscal authorities will be able to rein in spending um, we look at uh, taxes that have been introduced so far this year uh, by the uh, minister for finance uh, over the last uh, let's say four months or so when the budget was well last year. Uh, these taxes are expected to bring in some kind of income to be able to augment the shortfall in our revenue as a country. Uh, if that is managed well, coupled with some kind of uh, measures to take up assets in the system by way of uh, revenue that the government loses through some kind of corruption or some kind of uh, mishaps in the system, then we should be able to manage ourselves without going overboard when it comes to our fiscal uh, discipline. So I think that because IMF is in town, and whenever IMF is in town, they sometimes are hard on some of the decisions that uh, the country takes. So because they are in town around this time of election, 
I'm not too sure uh, the minister will have so much leverage to go beyond a certain limit when it comes to the expenditure because um, they have a country director who is always part of the process in terms of approvals and also some spending habits. So uh, it's going to put a bit of bricks on uh, what the minister can do. And there, there is not too open for them in terms of what they can do. So I think that we may end the year with within the fiscal discipline mark that we have uh, agreed with IMF before the bailout was granted somewhere last year. Right, Patrick, thank you so much for talking to us and helping us put, uh, I mean, sharing that perspective. Mm -hmm.